So today, as you can see, we're keeping in with this week's theme of lots of online shadows. Now, we know DeWolf and we know his tendencies, so mostly what we'll be looking for is habits and spacing. And of course, practicing our own commentation and analysis. <laughs> <laughs> so things might be slightly rocky, but you know, that's the point of training. Another thing we're using this for is, at least for me, to learn the Alex matchup a bit. So I may end up uh, looking up things in between matches if necessary. And hopefully I'll be able to share with you some stuff that I find out as well. There's not a bird in our house, it's just our phone. That would be nice if there was. <coughs> Alex versus Ryu. Alex versus Runaway Ryu. Alex versus Runaway Ryu with jump in sweeps. Or uh, anti air sweeps. So it looks like some of this match is going to be getting in on him. But suddenly Ryu switches to aggressive. And honestly, Alex has a lot of get in tools, but we know from past matches that DeWolf has a hard time figuring out how to use his mix ups. Hmm. This particular Ryu is interesting for him because. He's standing out just far enough. Partly something that I've just noticed. Uh, things with Alex. Um, what a hat. Ryu is basically only at the range for sweep, that hard punch that he used before, and specials. So Alex has some opportunities here. Especially since Ryu has been trying to walk in. That is going back to running away. That gets a little more difficult. So in this match, it looks like um, Ryu is basically alternating modes and forcing DeWolf to catch up. If he gets out far enough. Yeah, I'd like to see more power bomb from him, but he really needs to work on the spacing for that. If you're even a little off, it can basically make you whiff, and that's a move you don't really want to whiff. <laughs> but this is a fairly... Why did he raw sure you can... Anyway. I don't know, but DeWolf should have taken the opportunity to try for his CA there, I would, I would think. He doesn't have much in the way of sure you can punishes, which is something he's going to have to work on. But that's an easy one that you can often get. On the other hand, as random as it may have been, he may not have been ready for it. There you go. One of the nice things Ryu has is a lot of long buttons. I mean, he's no Chun-Li, but he can stay out of range where if his long buttons aren't working, he can just use Hadouken fairly safely. The other thing of note there is that uh, this Ryu seems to know exactly where to stand back, at least, when he's in his uh, runaway mode, uh, to uh, make it so that Alex's... What is the name of that jump in? I've forgotten again already. Powerbomb? Um, or Stampede? 
Either way. Uh, stampede, perhaps? To make sure that that ends up whiffing or landing right in front of him, which he can then punish. So that's something that uh, DeWolf is going to have to learn the spacing of a little bit better. Dash in into that might be something useful in this matchup, given the spacing difference that we've been seeing. But probably one of the easiest things as a beginner, especially when you're <coughs> fighting online against people, finding the button that is long that you're comfortable with hitting a lot is kind of important just for your own, like, you don't want to always autopilot, but to some degree, autopiloting is something that you need to do. Oh, thank you. Ah, I see. Anyway. Head crush being the grab and air stampede being the stomp. So finding that longer button and just maintaining that space, it's kind of easy to do once you play enough with just using that move a lot. So keeping that spacing, while an important basic step of footsies, it's one that, as long as you experiment with your buttons on your character a little bit and learn which one you like, is fairly easy to, to get a handle of. So it looks like I may be wrong here, and it's a matter, perhaps more so, of pressing the wrong button, because as we saw just a bit earlier, he's managing to get Ryu with that from quite a large distance. It could be a medium-heavy problem. I don't really know necessarily on Alex. <coughs> Good chance for a punish, but a little hard to react to with a heavy button before the block goes through. With a lot of online Ryus, this button tends to be their solar plexus or their crouching heavy kick. Or even just their standing medium punch. But all of them kind of get the same range. One thing you've got to know with, oops, with Ryus at this level is um, when Tatsu is coming in, if you can stand block it, he'll stay right in front of you and you can throw him out of the ending. Another thing that DeWolf should try to pick up if he has the opportunity. Mm. He's trying for those power bombs, but he's just slightly too far out. Ooh. Nice interruption. This runaway style is a little hard to deal with, though. His uh, head crush should get it, but it can be a little difficult to target with you moving around back and forth because his tatsus and such. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't Ouch. classify this Ryu as runaway. Well, he has certain moments where he's trying to get out. Yeah, but I mean, that's just the way Ryu is. I mean, you're ki you'd are you be kind of stupid to, like, if, if you <coughs> know you can get the life lead on somebody. With somebody as... Defensive as Ryu. You kind of don't want to give somebody the opportunity to just do damage close up to you. They want to be smart. Something I'm actually curious about. I noticed him using different versions of elbow in this match, and they actually sounded different. So... Pull out my handy little frame data app here. Because I'm curious how different they are in terms of plus or minus and startup and such when you're trying to get to this. I have this wrong, and I may be confusing myself regarding flash chop versus slash elbow. Mm hmm. Oh, there's separate moves here. 
Yeah, but I mean... Because I was looking, I was noticing before that he said different things, and so I was probably looking at the two moves and conflating them. In any case, largely minus four, at least for the light versions, although Elbow does get up there a little bit. Um, flashes faster. So he goes for the same walking back thing. Eh, I guess I can kind of see it now. He probably got a little more antsy after losing that one. Ah, uh, and he keeps walking up like that. And not throwing, so it makes no sense to me. This year's favorite button seems to be sweet, though, so... There's a little to be gained from punishing repeatedly up close. See, for Alex, I would technically consider Das Boots that sort of longer button <coughs> that is okay to press a lot, since it, it's fairly safe. Dust boot being the uh, hard kick? Yeah, the lead hard. It, yeah. <laughs> because that also happens to be in a similar range to Flash Chop. One notable thing to consider when fighting this particular Ryu, at least. I don't think I've noticed him using a single overhead, but his favorite button is sweet by far, so you may do well to spend a decent amount of your time crouching if you can. On the other hand, that does limit your mobility options, so it's something to consider. Eh. Alex is a pretty mobile character, so... <laughs> yes, I think Dust Boot is better regardless. Whoever named it Big Boot simply failed. <laughs> what? <laughs> Whatever. I swear I've heard it called Dust Boots. So. You've heard it called, called, called Dust Boots many times. No one likes the Big Boot name. Anyway. Up a level to XX Show Ryu XX. I'm so disappointed this isn't a Ken, uh, Ryu. Why? On the other hand, Ken can show Ryu things, I suppose. Hmm? Just from the name. I'm being silly, dear. Roll with mm. it. Ah, uh, the Fabio costume. I do not think I have seen this before. Hello, Fabio Ken. It's the CPT uh, booster pack thing. Yes, I mean, I've seen a small photo of it from uh, event hubs or something, but... Not seen it in match yet. It's uh um, I, I call it the uh <laughs> Come on. the uh Damn, what's it called? Never mind. Apparently I as don't call a, it anything. As the the head of the Masters family, I can understand it, but it doesn't seem to suit him very well. Pun of course intended. Ah, Bar Mitzvah kid. <laughs> I don't know. The the <coughs> scarf thing just reminds me of the Rabbi, like, shawl that they wear? I don't know. I'll just call it Bobby Okin to be a little less. This kind uh, is definitely on with the overheads. So, the complete opposite of the last person. More or less. He's very aggressive. He keeps up his pressure. He's not afraid to use his various overheads at all. Yeah, he really needs to work on the range for that. And there we are. <coughs> Air Stampede, I think it was. Ah, uh, no, head crush. Okay. Nice crush counter. Back to jumping in. The wolf has seems to gotten the hang of the overhead nature of this guy a bit. See, that was one. And it's ready for it. <laughs> That's the sort of thing that needs to happen. 
So now let's see how round four is. Starting with, with trade and jump ins. Near range sure you can or uh I don't mean sorry. Yeah he keeps like stopping after he does his drop kick jump in, but against online kins, you, you don't really want to give them that kind of space. You want to force them to have to like go for the Shoryu. Because that's really when you can get most of your damage against Ken. A lot of his normals are okay. safe. And his pot, his pressure is pretty unrelenting, even if the person doesn't really know what they're doing. So, Alex isn't one of those characters that's great on keeping up pressure, <coughs> because a lot of his moves push people back. Mm -hmm. But even still, at the range you do a jump and drop kick, you can probably do at least a flash chop or something. This is a nice watch, though. <laughs> Worthy of a master's. So one of the things that I see that's pretty common in a lot of bronze matches is the Shotos like crossing people up. But the, I, and this isn't just a Shoto only thing, this, this happens for a lot of people. That D-Trigger can be so hard to deal with if you're not used to it. But like and myself is that if you're getting crossed up you're probably standing at the wrong space and did something wrong to begin with <laughs> it's sort of like getting caught in the corner except in neutral you're getting crossed up our Ken friend here has gotten very we start he's being very patient in neutral when he's not jumping in I would perhaps say hesitant Honestly, Alex kind of forces you to be patient if you don't try to pressure him a lot. Which is something you would expect when I'm on cat. Well, he did it at the beginning, but I think he saw that crossing him up, going for jump-ins, and was a lot more effective in terms of getting damage. Because, I mean, this is likely. Jump-ins are strong, and DeWolf has not been anti-airing this match. In order to apply a lot of pressure as kin, you need to be close to your opponent. So, if you're fighting a grappler, you kind of don't want to do that. I mean, we know personally that DeWolf has issues doing his command throws and such, but from the other player's side, it's still sensible to treat him like a grappler. You think it's a matter of too much respect in a way? No, I mean, it's just sensible to treat a grappler as a grappler even if they aren't doing their command throw i suppose and, and once you have the your jump matchup working <laughs> if the jump in is working on your grappler there's no real reason to change the uh the Perhaps. situation is what i'm saying 
To continue with our Shoto season here, we have Akuma. A season? Well, what would you call it? This is not a fine dining establishment. <laughs> you would have to tell Ken that. He I seems suppose. to be overdressed for any other setting. <laughs> In any case, Akuma will balance him out by being uh, a little ragged. as you might expect from an Akuma. Hmm. Although this one does seem to know what he's doing. Yeah, he's good with the air and maintaining the, the pressure with those ground fireballs. He's controlling a lot of the space where Alex would normally want to be against him. He's making it hard to stand there safely. Oof. One of the difficult parts about fighting a Shoto is because... Good EX with that stun on the bar. Because they have a lot of long range pressure with their fireballs, they can keep your stun meter up. Because if you block a move, that doesn't that that resets the stun counter basically. So you're still standing in the back or you got knocked away or whatever by one of their moves but you're still waiting there. One thing we we know about DeWolf is that he is in fact um Needing to start working on his V-Trigger stuff a bit more. It's something that hasn't been a big part of his game until just recently. And we're seeing a bit of the fruits of that labor now, with uh, some, just some of the things he's getting through with it in the last few matches. He certainly has a long way to go, but the benefits are somewhat tangible. It's a very long-lasting Katsu. On the other hand, it can be dangerous to throw fireballs with that on back. I've been trying to get better at the Akuma matchup, but one of the things I do find extremely hard to deal with is his air of fireball. I mean, the reason being, if he's in the air, that's already a mix-up. So you kind of have to learn to either like dash through it or do some move that footsies you to a different position rather than trying to outright deal with the fact that he just jumped. Oh dear, I bumped the back button. Oh. On the other hand, that was totally worth rewatching. Good use of V-Trigger getting right through uh, Kuma's fireball preparations. Which he formed the second time, however, with that V-Trigger fireball and just close pressure. But now it's anyone's game. may have trouble winning the air game against Akuma with that. 
his best spot is probably to approach from the ground. However, there. that right there. That should go on his sheet. The fact that he can do that tackle and just move just a little bit forward, that's definitely something that needs to go on his sheet. Ooh, now that was an excellent trick. And I bet he can probably use that drop kick a bit more against a, some of his other air options where he hangs there right before he starts to move. Obviously it requires a little bit of prediction, as I don't think one could do that on reaction. But it's certainly something to consider when you have an Akuma that you know, that's go you know is going to be doing this a lot. Well, it'll trade with a lot of things too, but you've just got to kind of take that sort of damage. Anything True, but if you're taking the damage to keep Akuma from thinking the air is an insta-win, right. it's going to help you out. On the other hand, here we are seeing Akuma's wonderful damage output. Glass cannon though he may be, he is certainly a cannon. Hmm. Not sure what he was trying to do there. Akuma Honestly, I think he needs his uh, V reversal a little more against this person. But. But possible. Because, I mean, he's going to take lots of damage. It's Akuma. But taking lots of damage means that you get more V meter on average. Still, you only have a finite amount of damage you can take before it's game over. Still, but I mean, what I'm saying is, play a four-bar game, not a three-bar game. And Akuma really doesn't need much time for warm-ups. No. So I'm actually curious, and I'm going to check. Although perhaps I should not do so just immediately. Um, Have we been putting on inputs? No. No. We should probably put on inputs. If you wish, but I don't see the purpose. Mm -hmm. I don't know Akuma's buttons that well. So. Well, if you'd like to learn that, we can turn on the display. He is primarily Shoto with an air Eureka and a V-Skill parry with cancels out of it. Yeah, but he has decent normals. Or command normals. Thank you. I see. So I kinda wanna learn when those happen and what In any are. case, doing good there with the uh teaching Akuma the air isn't quite entirely exclusively his. Very nice with the V uh V trigger there. And managing the shoulder up close pressure seems to be doing well for him. And I've seen this working before as well too. That uh command throw was Slightly ill-timed with him coming out of the air like that, since you cannot grab a flying opponent. Very nice. I would have expected a CA was needed there, but the EX seems to have done quite well. Honestly, with Alex, getting clipped but parrying isn't actually a bad outcome, because it does put you far enough away that the person has to get back in on you. So just being slightly more defensive after those sorts of situations and block might pay off a little more. Akuma has excellent uh, corner carry on his EX shoryukens and such there. That combo he was doing taking you half a stage away. Not even half a screen. But that's a hard one for many people to deal with, certainly for me at this level. You got to manage to jump out of these, and that's not the reaction you learn against any other character. Ah oh, man, that move is so good in this matchup. Very nice evasion and use of the trigger. Just to keep him well disoriented. What is that crouching oh, tackle cool. thing called? I don't know what you mean. Like he's crouching and then he like tackles the diagonal. Shoulder tackle? Yeah. I don't know, I was going to look that up before we got distracted with the inputs. Hmm. 
because I mean I sort of feel like this matchup is fairly bad for Alex but it's not completely hopeless apparently I don't know what'll happen once Akuma gets a uh, meter meterless DP come the balance patch though. Lightning sword. <laughs> a very flashy Ken, I'm sure. In any case, it appears to be <laughs> <laughs> it appears to be a command normal, and I'm not sure which one of these it is. Um, unlikely for it to be like Tomahawk, I would suspect that it is Face Crush Chop. Okay. But I don't think it knocks down. Ah, that's a throw. <laughs> no. Ah, that is his crouch heavy punch, he actually tells us. Oh, okay. And since he, do you want the inputs still for Ken now, so In any case, here we are again. Doing a decent job for the most part, at the beginning at least, of keeping him out. Although this Ken does know how to get in a little bit better. And keeping up that pressure. Managing with the jump-ins, but I think that it was his dashing in earlier that he was uh, also getting pretty well. Not giving Alex very many opportunities, however. DeWolf is, going, is struggling a bit uh, to get in on this Ken enough to actually do much to him. And Ken is basically taking free range with that. Yeah, and he possibly needs uh, his... one of his Lariat-ish moves. Um, the elbow the chop to get in a bit more? Ah, the chop, I think. I think I see the difference between those two moves properly now. In any case. There we go. Very nice feature grant, yeah. Now that is a good conversion if you can do that reliably, especially since uh, incoming jump attacks can be somewhat predictable in terms of their carrying frames, from what I understand. Although that can happen. Nice reversal there. We are. Now that's a good crush counter. Oof. It's not often that I encounter that. <laughs> now that was excellent. Keep oh. that up and you might get somewhere. <laughs> anyway then. Planting trees. That was so great that I completely lost what I was going to talk about before it. Ah yes, yeah, so that V-trigger range. It's not often that I see that actually end up whiffing. Um, oh, I clearly don't remember what I was going to say.
Very well read or predicted from Ken there. Lots of jumping <laughs> this time around. Although that V trigger, uh, the parry anti air is absolutely glorious, especially with all the damage you can convert off of it. Ken now yeah. using that max range and well, he's continuing to jump in, but it's probably more so since the V trigger has run out. I wouldn't quite say that it's like really good, but it's more so that it lets you escape. Perhaps. And I feel like uh, it's basically punishing your opponent by giving them all of the damage they were trying to take, put on well, you. I mean, getting the damage is actually fairly inconsistent. Perhaps. I have noticed that he tends to go over at times as well. In any case, I think it's more so just that it looks there. to me like a good discouragement. He found the anti-air, or the air-to-air -air button he needed, so that might work. Ah, out drop the combo. Oh! So close. He's getting better at that pairing, it looks like. Yeah, he... not the easiest thing in the world, necessarily, to keep up. Especially after the first one or two, and you have to figure out what precisely this move is going to be. He really did need that particular improvement, though. Also, it just is more interesting to watch when Alex gets to use his B-Trigger properly. Indeed. Uh, no. He forgot that he found the button. I think that's his, uh, medium punch? Possible. Many characters have a decent medium punch air to air. It's also unfortunate when one manages to find the button that solves something, but not necessarily register it mentally, because you're in the heat of the match. I would also say that another thing I would put on the sheet for this matchup is Dust Boots and Flash Chop do a lot to keep Ken at a range that is more advantageous to Alex. So keeping up using Dust Boots and Flash Chop interchangeably is fairly important. And you can see a lot of times that Ken ends up getting in on him because there was a pause in the moment where he was at the range to do Dust Boots, but he didn't use it, or Flash Chop, and he didn't use it. And then he just closed in the space because, well, there's no reason not to, especially on Ken. And now the run back. It's hard at this level to make decisions quickly, though, so I, I understand that. It's just gonna be a part of the struggle at this level. But definitely something that I would try to keep in mind for this particular matchup. Ken doesn't have too much that he can use to pressure with at that range. <laughs> oh dear. Oops. No. You're fine. Okay. Let's rumble. Come on. Let's turn up the heat. Round one. Fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he deserved to be stomped in the head for that. Yep, for sure. Well then. I'm actually disappointed now that Ken's going to win the set. They're just channeling their inner punk. It's the prayer before the battle. <laughs> to the well, it seems to what we have from her first. <laughs> to, to punk the god. <laughs> the one thing I wonder if he can learn is... If, uh, DeWolf, if you can possibly learn some of your V cancels, you might have a better setup 
not just in terms of getting damage, but also having a free point to activate your V-Trigger so that you can actually start to make use of it again. Although it's good to see you having that crush counter up and ready. I wonder why that didn't work. Hmm. Let's have a look at it again. That must be a hitbox game. I, I think it's actually because those two hits in that show you can go too quickly together. I noticed with Karine that because her EX Mujin Kyaku has very, very close frames on the first two hits, it will break through a lot of armor. Simply because the ar reaction that is triggered when the armor is broken still has another couple of frames of delay. But, it, can counter -hit but it didn't even parry the first hit. It's not armor, it's parry. Well then perhaps there's some sort of startup issue, or I don't actually know, I suppose. I have no idea. There's probably some hitbox magic. thing. Magic. We yeah. can call it magic. <laughs> <laughs> That crouching medium punch is pretty nice for poking as well. I do wolf reports that his turning is off from the bear. And Drillian reports that Light Show Yukon is three frame. Uh, okay. So the combination of these two things may be difficult. I see. Good to know. Apparently the, the uh, light show you can being three frames will hit before the parry can happen if it's input at the same time Alex hits his V-trigger. There's a little bit of startup on the V-trigger, or well the activation probably provided the one or two frames of delay and that's it. Indeed it was. Oh, there's yet another one. This, this is apparently two sets against the same person in a row. Or, uh, two matchups. I don't really know the word for that. Round, match, set. Not game, really. In any case, okay. since we're back, let's have one more shot. The cluster. Eh? <laughs> I really have no idea. A cluster of matches. Ah, I see. <laughs> True. <laughs> I seem to subconsciously keep better track of this than I do consciously. In any case, it's set. Hmm. So what do you call the pair of matchups that composes the set? Well, I think it's just also a set. Hmm. Confusing. I'll need to figure this all out. Good use of thunder but in the meantime, kick, Dwarf is doing well at this range, and Ken is getting a little more hesitant, although I'm not entirely sure why. Possibly because... Hmm. No, I don't know. He stopped doing, uh, air stampede. Well, he hasn't been having much success with it. It's definitely something that he needs to practice, at least particularly against this. The can wasn't sure where you can it, but he's doing it ranges where perhaps the uh, medium head crush might be useful. But yeah, he's been having a good time doing his neutral jumps and stuff, so... I don't think the wolf has the right training anti-air wise. So honestly the pot could probably benefit him a little bit. Do we even have no we do have a neutral jump on the King Bot. <laughs> Waiting for that parry didn't help him. 
one thing that he's going to need to learn is to be a bit cautious when he sees his opponent. Know what, where the range is where his V-Trigger will whip when it releases. And be a little cautious when his opponent seems to be moving out to that range. To possibly release it early, just to hit them on the way back. Or so that it can parry during the run. And now, here we are. De Wolf versus uh, Wormt Ong. Worm Tongue! Oh, is that a tongue? Oh, I see. Worm Tongue. Interestingly capitalized, but Worm Tongue nonetheless. Ooh, nice hair. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know they had a different hair color set for that. He looks like oh, a. Well, you must remember that for all characters, you get interesting hair color changes. Yeah, but in he the looks like a blueberry. Monsters. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, they had to give him something different. And what if not blue is the opposite of red? I, su I suppose he's more of a raspberry sort of fellow. Oh my. <laughs> I'm impressed at how he manages to get that bit of cloth to stay up there. Probably by not cleaning it very well. Indeed, but in fact that auto-execution of the sledgehammer is exactly what I'm worried about. If you're being careful about the matter, when that Ken walked out was backing up when you started charging it. If you had released it a little bit early, you would have hit him as he w walked back up. But since you didn't, you ended up holding it to the maximum charge and going, right? Or perhaps not to the maximum charge, but you ended up whiffing in front of him because you didn't catch him on his way out. So yes, because you can't cancel it, and if it's held long enough, it will execute on its own. But that's precisely the reason, actually, that you need to worry about um, learning to release it a little early when your opponent is walking out of it. In any case, I think I managed to miss basically the entire round. Do you mind if we restart that? Uh, it, there wasn't much to see, honestly. It was just, oh, it looks like DeWolf figured out on his own that Crouching Heavy Punch is useful in this matchup. All right, then. We'll see. <laughs> That's the TLDR. And honestly, this may, this puts him at a spacing that the Akuma seems to have difficulty with. Well, for the moment, the team is having no problems, and DeWolf is actually the one who seems hes hesitant. Worm Orange, though. What a name. Or Worm Tom. Worm Orange. I perceive it as Worm to Orange. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oof. That power bomb. the air to air there. Mm. See, so, you now it doesn't look like an anti-air, and Nakara can correct us in the stream chat if he likes. There. Ah, oh, no. Combo dropped again. That apparently doesn't work. It doesn't? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it didn't I've work seen there, that work. so it may work other times, and I don't know the conditions yet. Uh, I, I think it's just a timing thing. Possible. There are various things, especially on Korean, where uh, cancels versus links, for instance, makes an enormous amount of difference. Sometimes in an unintuitive direction. It's a good escape, but I feel like there are better options at certain uh, ranges. Although against that Akuma, range being sucks. able to get out can be very important. I'm so used to Armika's good command throw ranges, but it, man, Alex's command throw range sucks. He used the EX command throw standing right next to him and still missed. I can't help you. Alex needs buffs. <laughs> All I'm see. saying, I mean, he's already kind of a beefcake, but... What? They made Firefighter <laughs> Calendar... Alex, I'm sorry. I get to call him Beefcake now. <laughs> I see. He's wearing the outfit 
for the job he wants. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Round two of blueberry everywhere. Or is this three? Three? Three. Two? Two. <laughs> <laughs> number, number, <-dy> number. <laughs> Round number, number, -dy number. But yes, I do believe it is two. This is a wonderful stage, though. I'm gonna have to buy it with my fight money. Unfortunately, I think my fight money is largely allocated to purchasing characters to bot at some point. Like Akuma? Because I totally need Akuma. No oh, no, you can buy him yourself. But, possibly. No, I need to need some Ed! <laughs> or Taylor. Taylor would also be cool. But mostly Ed. But anyway, let's get back to focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Starting with the jump in there. There's a lot of air in this game, and that's something you kinda likes. But the ranges we're standing at, it seems like uh, the wolf has gotten into at least when he's in those outer ranges. I'm trying to just deal with the jump ins or air threats. However, against Takuma, I'm not convinced of how good of an idea this is. Particularly before he managed to activate his V-Trigger. All of those air threats can be quite buried in... Well, as you see, very deadly. Yeah, probably. I mean, every single Akuma that is bronze in the world will most likely abuse his sweep at some point. So... But honestly, Akuma players are a lot better about it than Ryu players. For everyone's context, if you're watching on YouTube instead of Twitch later, uh, really as I pointed out, you may need to hide a sweep in the Akuma bot. I'm surprised he didn't spend more meter on that for the Oki. But he probably doesn't know that Oki, so... Well, at this point you can consider that he's so far ahead, maybe the meter is more usefully safe. I don't know. Very good. Jumping out of that just like you need to. Now that was deceptive. I don't think I even realized he could do an empty one. An empty what? Demon flip thing. Whatever that racket is called. I'm gonna have to look that up as well. I'm not sure if the demon flip is the jump or the racket itself. I'm pretty sure it's just the jump. Or because he can go. Here I said into... jump when I meant uh, throw. Oh, no, I'm pretty it's sure the it's the- It's the racket itself? Alright. Yeah. I'm not sure you can program that in the Akuma bot or not, but that's part of what I have issues with, is the mix-up between the Demon flip throw and the hit. All right then. Thank you. Billion has confirmed for me that uh, demon flip, in parts alternately known, I think, as Hyakishu, is in fact just the Rekka itself, the startup. Like one might refer to Karin's as Gurren or Gurren Ken. Oh, the Gurren Ken is apparently one specific form of it I learned the other day. You'd think I'd know these things, but there are so many names for them you really can't tell. Fake Shoto alert. Fake Shoto. The Fake Shoto say. alert. I'm a little confused. Galsim has fireballs. <laughs> yes, yes. Show me his uh, Shoryuken, if you want to see that. His Shoryuken is his stupid drill move he gets next <laughs> patch. I see. I'm calling it now. <laughs> but more seriously, they both have the same thing in common. They can Q 
keep you at a distance fairly fairly well. But apparently not this one, and especially not when Alex's V-Trigger is active. Dwarf is having an excellent time keeping it and keeping the pressure up on this particularly Akrox. Akrox. Hmm. All right. Croak! However, he is rookie level dosing, so there is something to be said for that as well. Is this casual landing? I believe so. Which is why I was interesting and surprised that we got the run back, actually. It's not entirely common to match repeatedly against the same person. The uh, throws aren't going to help Dawson much here. Although I'm so disappointed that command throw didn't work. Keeping him nicely out, but he's not actually letting the Dawson get much use out of his long limbs. This is really overall a bad situation for a Crox. Akrox. I yeah. think... I think the tick throw on Alex is probably way harder for Alex than it is for Mika. Because if his range on his command throw is that bad... What? The well, trouble. The, <laughs> you can and, throw Alex. Anyway. anyway. Yeah, but he was like shield broke or whatever. Oh, whatever. Anyway. No, I'm gonna have to watch that again. The tick throw... Your light punch move is probably going to knock back the opponent just a little bit, usually. Oh, he's just whiffed. So... It's like a light punch, then a whiff of a heavier punch, and he got thrown out of it. Nothing surprising there. He whiffed? Mm-hmm. Whiffed Alex what? Did. The throw? No. Here, have one last look. Um... Do I think I can put him into slow motion? No. No, it doesn't go back below one. Oh. There's no I need to make it slow motion. Oh. What did I do? You made it fast motion. Don't be quiet. <laughs> anyway. There we go. Anyway. On with our lives. He's doing better now that he's uh, backing away and starting to use his fireball, but he was having a lot of trouble before. I noticed that, actually, later on. So... Uh, we can discard... I think we're looking at two separate instances. In any case, nothing to worry about, because we're on our way. Anyway, point being that Alex's tick throw probably takes a lot more practice and a lot more dexterity. Dawson is really not landing that, uh... <laughs> All was disappointing as uh, Dawson in that. Oh! Okay, we got something else. So, honestly, at your level, DeWolf, I would probably try to not focus on said tick throw. <laughs> I know Alex needs it at higher levels, but you just struggle with it so much and it does make you end up losing opportunities to command throw. Command throw so needs buffs. Dear lord. Yeah. Anyway, okay. It's like worse than we use standard throw. But I mean, as I was about to say, that being said, practicing against a rookie Dalsin, your 
take command throw. It's probably not the worst thing to do. I Since suppose you meant to combo into it. Good hey lord. What I see here is, or at least it feels to me that you need... Oh dear. And how quickly the life falls. It seems to me here like you need a... What was it? Head chomp? Your headbutt air flip thing. What? The air grab from Alex. He needs it. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> Although I'm not sure how well that would work, given Dawson has a tendency to be a little bit slow. Uh huh. Rillian points out that uh, the pushback is actually too much on that button for the command Oh, that's And there we have a good one. Do need to avoid standing in that fire if you can, although he managed to stay out of it for a decent time with the throws that he was had going on. Alex wins. Anyway, that's all we have for the Dawson, and we're back to Ken. Back now to our regularly scheduled Shoto season. <laughs> and all things related. seem to be as rookie as his rank in the <laughs> so we're not necessarily going to get a whole lot out of this. Oh man, I just came up with the worst joke. If he's Lucky Seven King, does that make Alex an unarmed bandit? I mean, he does kind of look like one when he does his, like, sledgehammer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And apparently he's getting away with robbery, so... <laughs> you know. It works. Honestly, I think you could gain a lot here with just the jump-ins. Using the jump -in button is that Lands decent as a jump in, but will also maul someone who's on his way up to meet you. On the Ken side, honestly, if he was going to keep staying at that range and keep trying to get in, fireballs would probably help him at least a little bit. Honestly, in this game, the beginners don't really use their fireballs that much. Hmm. And I know they're like weaker in this game, but it's not hard to spam them. So, <laughs> I mean... In any case, by my executive order or royal decree or whatever you want to call it, we are skipping this one because we're not going to get much out of that particular newbie can, unless you object. Mm -hmm. All right then, onward. I don't care. To see what Arc 9 Senpai can give us. Arcan 9. 
Arcanine Senpai. Oh dear. Arcanine. Oh dear, and all fiery as well. Oh my lord. I don't think these two are dressed for the same event at all. And at the High Roller Casino, I think it's actually Alex that needs to change. Although I'm not sure he owns anything he could wear to this. Suspenders totally count as shirts. Well, I suppose the dress code doesn't apply to the one-armed bandits. <laughs> Very true. Come on, let's turn up the heat. Damn, that is a shiny floor, though. Balrog spent a ton of money on this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Add a bow tie to Alex. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And back to work. We're doing a decent job here. These neutral jump overs. And that is why we put in the stupid air tatsu into this spot. Back to Sharia punishes. Basically, we're fighting the bot at this point. Ne? Don't you think so? Yeah, basically. There's his not movements too much are a little difference. different, but his patterns overall, the themes are the same. He's just missing V skill run. Someone inputted him wrong. He's jumping back after the fireball instead of forward. I've gotta correct that recording. Honestly, jumping back against Alex is probably a good idea. Probably. At least on, like, a Shoto. Right, because you can't do as much against Fireball Zoning once you have him all the way out. Right. As long as you're prepared to, um, show you the, uh, incoming air moves. But I mean, the stampede Ken's Tatsu's, his air Tatsu's are pretty safe. Like, in general. Mm. So, that's... He can... Oof, missed throw opportunity there from the Ken. Bully you with sh the you can. Or Haroken, I mean. And then... Mm -hmm. Here we are with exactly the bot again. Oh. See, that's what this I mean. This deserves something better off of that. I think that might have... No, that one would have chipped, but... It would have chipped. Oh. It was a chip. <laughs> Shows what I know. That's what I get for listening to James Chin all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, are you teasing him too about this now? All I'm saying is that... The man could use some improvements in his guessing game. That was a nice uh, jump in there with the incoming drop kick set up perfectly timed and spaced to allow the throw afterwards. It's a good whiff as well. Your opponent would not necessarily recognize what was going on there in time. Again, Alex and seems now... to have trouble with that air Tatsu will get in. Now we are playing the game of how to get in. The trigger is active, but it's draining quickly and he's not making much use of it at the moment. See, the problem here, I think, is that you're still trying to jump in while you have your V-trigger active. When you could just parry away through fireballs and come in, right? Or yeah, basically. get a little more out of approaching on the ground. One thing to always remember is that unless your ground game is sufficiently solid, your air game is going to be meaningless. <laughs> An on-point critical art from Arkin 9 Senpai. Our Ken 9 Senpai, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly a fire type. You can tell by the flames. Really? I'm not the one pointing out the obvious here. <laughs> oh, man. I think I just got burned. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. But you'll get two more chances, at least. So let's have at it. Why don't I get nine chances? <laughs> You'll have to do a battle lounge for that. Ah, execution problems are the demon of it. 
everyone's demon at the lower ranks, really. Although I'm not sure it necessarily goes away, no matter how good you get. With Duotha letting us know in stream chat that he was having execution issues in that match. Hello again, Ken. I hope Come you don't on. damage that nice watch. Let's Especially on. blocking with that hand. Fight. Well, good luck. Still, after blocking, going for like a three-frame jab isn't the worst thing to do, especially if you can use that to convince your opponent to occasionally light show you. Ken is really keeping his mobility up at the start of this match. Backing off a little bit now, but he's gotten to wolf very well nervous to hit buttons. Not something you see every day, whipping that uh, high kick into sweep. Oh yeah, Das Boot used to its fullest potential. Good use of V-Skill. Actually, I'm not so convinced. I think that'd be- I'm wondering if that V-Trigger might perhaps have been better used with the EX Command throw on the other end, like used in some other situations. I've noticed that he's been doing V-Trigger one no, way, no, and then no. immediately V-Triggering back. I meant he did the V-Skill to get the counter hit, so that way his slash chop sledgehammer thing would work ah, out. I didn't him. notice the warm-up. Because that gives the counter hit, which makes whatever he does next a lot more safe to do. <laughs> that was silly. How is that not an overhead? Which one does boot? No. He does something that looks like an overhead. No. Well, I can't help you. Mm. Oof. Nice getting him stuck in that corner there, but... I don't think that head chomp is actually able to work in the corner. Even the light one seems to just cross them up and miss. Ugh. Did not get the most out of that stun. The air stampede works though. So I don't see a reason for him to not do that. No, I think it's weird. just a matter of him pushing the wrong button. That's possible. I don't actually know what the inputs of those are. Let's have a look. Because I've seen him do air, air stampede. stampede is charge down up light kick, and head crush is charge down up light punch. So actually, that's interesting to note. But those are both charge moves. So it doesn't excuse which one of them he used. But I hadn't quite realized that in the past. Yet one more thing to adding. What? Well, yet one more thing for me to add to my learning balance. And to show me how to handle him with Hibuki. Back to the casino. Round two, All-American Martial Arts Champion and Head of the Masters Family Come versus on. the One-Armed Bandit. <laughs> what, you think I'm going to stop using that? No. Will he lose his fortune or will he double down? That was a good Hadoken punish. Well, the one thing is, uh, DeWolf, that it is certainly very true that one does not always notice stuns in time to, well, not hit them, depending on what you're up to. Our All-American Arcanine is doing rather well with the corner pressure here. Very nice EX right through the fireball. You've got to be careful where you jump in, though. And that air top here I would continues say plaguing him. But there's also this show where you can, so you never know. Oof. If Such I sorrow. remember correctly, the right response 
for Ken's air Toxu is neutral ground. And he doesn't really react to it at all. He just blocks. So if it were me playing the Ken, I would use that all day, which it seems like he's doing. In fact, when he stops doing it, he gets hit in the face. There you go, that was pretty good. Keep that up and the match will be yours. That would have probably saved them. Honestly, I don't see why Ken would need EX Hadouken against DeWolf in this matchup. Because DeWolf is easily kept backwards. The only reason you would really want the EX Hadouken is if he kept staying in your face and you wanted to push him back a little bit. So saving it for like the EX Tatsu instead would probably be a better idea. And he didn't really get much damage out of that combo either, so... Yeah, overall, Arcanine's meter usage is just not all that great. The Wolf, on the other hand, isn't either, given he has full meter and hasn't really done much with it. We like to save his for critical arts. But I will say, I don't think he necessarily fishes for the critical arts or rather aims to put them out as much as he necessarily could. Well, if you go into a match with critical art, you want to do it early because that's unearned meter you're losing. Sure. With everything you do. I and mean, having a massive life lead is never a problem. And we're already halfway in and he still hasn't used On the other hand, his uh, EX Flash Chop is doing quite well getting through some of the projectiles at times. So he probably needs to actually use that more rather than the super. Probably. On the other hand, here we are. Wake up, Ross and Blue. The one-armed bandit takes his money. Double down did not help him here. <laughs> it's like he took the shirt off of him. I think that went the other way around, actually, somehow. Maybe the one-armed bandit is just trying to win a shirt. Man. After he lost his. Gotta clean out all of the money first, then get the shirt. On the other hand, at the end of the day, Boxer is just going to take it all. That implies the house always wins. Which is true. Mika's. I have no, de going through, I have no desire to, to, to watch the rookie Mika flail around. I'm sorry. Then let's continue on with our Shoto season. And hot dang it. <laughs> now see, that I would expect to be a Ken. As opposed to our well, show really No, 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 we, we, we don't know if he's wearing hot review or not. He isn't. Should have been a Ken. However, our level 32 Ryu might be actually rather good at this. Let's find out. The rookie be Mika beat him, he reports to us. So it might Man. be, since it was exactly zero LP, that the stats didn't load. Maybe. It's a common occurrence. We're on Shoto season for now, so we can continue that. Unless our Mika feels like Mika ink. Meh. <laughs> DeWolf, do you want me to go over that? I don't mind. Let the zoning begin. Ooh, very nice. Ken knows- er, he's not a Ken. Have you noticed what he's doing here? I would almost expect him to be on point with Shoryukens if, uh, Wolf came in with some of his flash stuff. No, flash stuff, the air stuff. I'm calling it flash kick in my head now. The Ryu has been keeping really good spacing. This is exactly yes. how the match should go for Ryu. And did himself. you see that? The Ryu not only jumped over him, but he wasn't quite sure he crossed up, and he parried so he would hit the V trigger and be able to punish it even if he landed on the wrong side. And if he landed on the far side, as he did, 
the parry would have done nothing, so it wouldn't even matter. Excellent positioning movement on the cat. Ryu's part. He definitely knows what he's doing. For sure. I'm surprised to see him at the rank he's at. But perhaps he's been practicing other things. And it can be hard to get out. That was a really, really good response. That was correct. If Very can, good there, reacting to the neutral jump in. Empty jump. If you can make him just a little skittish about your uh, air stampede, you might get somewhere. On the other hand, it looks like you have to stop all of the cross-ups so you're going to die. The reversal. Nope, no good. That's a lot of stun to be carrying, though. You really should consider it. Does Ryubot have a, a cross-up, really? Because it really should. I get crossed up all the time. It has forward jumps that it can use. Uh, so, as for cross-ups, I'm not entirely sure. Um, let me see if I remember any... I think it's his yes, medium I believe kick. It. Oh, medium kick, huh. Mm, I don't know if he has other buttons. No, there's no medium kick cross-up in the Ryu. Okay. However, Rinland reports is technically basically all cross-ups. Which matches with my understanding. It just won't be using that particular button. He does have lots of other options from when I was handling some of the recording for it earlier today. Good luck with the opponent names here today. Okay. Wolf lets us know that he's found a knee drop to be his best option against Shoto in the corner. Oh, then I don't think I actually know which one that is. This is very on point. Excellent footsies. Oh, holy shit! Very nice tatsu. I did not know that could go through that. I thought. I think you mean hot dang it. Well noted. Well, hot <laughs> dang it indeed then. He may be using his name as he intended it very soon. Very solid here. Ah, uh, Air Knee Smash is the one that DeWolf was referring to when he was referring to Knee Drop. Alright then. Yeah, in this matchup against this Ryu, I think you're gonna need to use your meter for um, EX uh, Head Crush. He needs to use his V Reversals, actually. What does that have to do with meter usage? Well, it's just the other meter. Well, I suppose. Yeah, be a reversal because would probably help. this Ryu is extremely it knows the Alex matchup very well. He's extremely well prepared for every possible V trigger, managing to Tatsu it, jump o neutral jump over it into parry to try and bait it, or well not even bait it, but react to it perfectly. He's entirely on point, and with the pressure he's been putting up and how close he's been taking you to stun duel, in this sort of situation, you absolutely need your V reversal. I know you've been trying to learn your view trigger, but this is not the round for it. But I was victory squeezed out there. Let's see what happens now. Honestly, the wolf also needs view reversal practice too. Oh yeah, certainly. So he's mentioned that he has trouble remembering to execute it or thinking of it correctly as part of his option set. Good anti-air. He has the pressure excellently. The view is not necessarily completely ready for it. I saw a failed parry there, but once he's back in that crossup range, down it goes. He keeps trying. Very the Ryu keeps trying to jump back, and it's just not working. I haven't seen one yet. Yeah. Drop combo, unfortunately, for you here. 
Oof. Just waiting for that. Unfortunately, I needed to be the uh, medium, maybe? Uh, head chomp instead. But from what I've seen, this plays fairly similarly to Reebok. Even it's very it, solid, though. I, even as solid as it is, I, I don't see too much missing from his game plan that is any different from the bot. Perhaps. I think he uh, cross-up throws a little more. Hmm. Or maybe I'm thinking about the Ken. No, either way. Could be, could be. Oh, we're hot. Dang it, we have another round to go. <sighs> then hopefully soon I'll go get the chance to assuage my ravenous hunger. Swing. Yes, your favorite word lately. Not assage. Sorry. No, not assage. Assuage. Really? Mm. That, that's how it's pronounced. <laughs> assuage is so lame. <laughs> I like assage better. Uh -huh. So. I'm that Julian Assange is, is a person. Assange. Hiding assange. assange. You gotta be fancy and French about it. Not when you're hiding in the Ecuadorian embassy. Anyway. Oof, very nice. He keeps whipping that flash chop combo. And goes for like a crouching light punch or something? I don't know. I'm turning on inputs here actually because I'm going back. I think it's possible that in this particular case, Wolf needs to be using slightly lighter buttons in neutral. In certain positions when they get close up together. I see. So it's not that he was pressing light punch instead, it's that he was messing up his uh, execution for flash chop. The reversal would have been good there. Mm. Jumps out of the way just in time. Oof. He needs to throw there, it's interesting. I think hot dang it at this point is uh, doing mix-ups on his jump-ins that DeWolf is just not able to for. Yeah, agreed. Wasting them, really. But here we have it. Oh, dang it, he did it again. Well, I had to say it one more time. We just ran out of him. Was this cami particularly laggy or anything, Dwarf? Aha, here we are. Plenty more to do. So I suppose we'll... <laughs> I didn't intend to skip all of those and page up yet. Mm. But I'm not gonna mess with it. Well, you need food. So no, I'm not gonna mess with it. We'll probably finish that page or whatever. I couldn't get a banana.
Dash. I see a lot of reuse using triple dash for whatever reason. You think it would get punished more. But it's fairly hard to respond to. Dash in this game is pretty good overall, though, because it lets you shimmy, mm -hmm. so you throw, on, knock him down, dash back, get in again, dash back again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, as... That would be terrifying if it were an air throw. Like Hooligan, his uh, head chomp. It, did, it just passed through on the air to air section there. This Ryu play is pretty uh, normal. Like, sliced bread sort of normal. Kind of boring, but seems to be working. So, well, you don't have to be fancy if you can get it right. I was really expecting to show you can there, though. And that's how that interaction with the X's goes. Well, it's more so that his V trigger was on, so it already had multi-hit property. So that's possible, why. It possible. That's why it was able to kill. Mm. Oh, we've gotten up into ranked matches now. I didn't actually notice that. You want to do that, Mika, before we stop? I don't think we want to go through his whole yeah, so... Yeah, fine. We'll see what the possibly not rookie Mika is up to. Oh, we ended up in a totally weird place. Yeah, oh, okay. I don't know. I, you turned the page, so... Oh, I must have bumped some button. Alright. But... The hungry must eat soon, so... Yes, I would appreciate it. Might as well finish all those casual matches and call it a day. Well, most of them. <laughs> Perhaps. Most rad Mika. It's not a horrible Mika name. Level 18. So yes, I think the zero points is total bullshit in this case. Okay. I mean, there's ways that you could end up with you can zero be one of those, points. You can, in fact, be one of those weird people who gets their character to level 18 without ever entering ranked. Well, I think casuals gives you XP, so... Yes, that would be how you would do it. seems to empty jump for some reason, but then doesn't go for the command throw. So... Should I add a little command throw competition there? Honestly, I would have used rope throw there to try and get him back in the corner. 
It, you can get punished for it, but Rad had such a big life lead at that point, it would have been worth it. One thing I noted, and I have no idea how accurate or true this is, or well, how suitable, uh, but if Mika goes, gets you into range for command throw, obviously, from what we've seen, her range is better than yours, but if she gets right up close, you might try intercepting the command throw with one of your own. Depending on the method she uses to approach, it might be her timing-wise or something similar. Nah, I'd just neutral jump, honestly. Mm, Alright. That might be a little bit safer. Oh dear. Yeah, that's one of those moments where it really... Honestly, you should have be reversal be there. I'm sure that having the V-Trigger active would be wonderful for you, but it was an utter waste in that situation. You needed to V-Reversal to save yourself. But overall, you really should try, at least consider learning some of the V-Cancel combos, so you don't have to put that raw trigger there. But mostly, it looked like this Mika did what they wanted. And that's never a good thing, if you're <laughs> fighting a Mika. That's well, a good thing for the Miko. They, they didn't really seem to have any trouble, like, stuttering or pushing. But overall, they seem to use her command throw uh, pressure a decent amount, so jumping a little more might be useful. Mika has good anti-airs, so jumps sparing sparingly, but... Getting them to have to think about needing to do wingless airplane or Lady Mika as an anti-air, or even their crouching medium punch, is still useful. They keep going backwards after they jump in with that drop kick. I have no idea. What light kick? Wow, those light kicks are really working out for her. Very strangely. Oh, you would think Mika would know that. Well, I guess this is really with his friend. There's Nadeshko. They um, did. A little disappointed she didn't manage to capitalize on that and turn it into a rope throw. They did the wrong Nadeshko, so clearly they're still not too experienced. Usually in that situation, you want to either do the forward Nadeshko or the neutral Nadeshko. Because the wolf isn't going oh, to the forward approach Nadeshko, her. Or is the forward Nadeshko from the other... Ah, I see. Okay. It's... The matchup well, with the Alex... Idea was to get the matchup the with Nadeshko. Alex just isn't about... Alex coming to Mika. He has longer buttons. He has no reason to be the one that tries to get in. Oh dear. Chaw. That's the end of that. <laughs> Robbed. Well, let's see Meeting if we can go. No. Yeah. That was... I'll have to remember that, because... I did not expect that to work. What did exactly happen there? The V trigger canceled the uh, parry move just long enough that he could get off the critical art. So he broke the he broke the parry armorishness. All right. Because you can throw him while he's doing sledgehammer just fine.
The Mika should be a little braver though, because you can actually whip punish Sledgehammer fairly nicely. And he does have that problem that I had noted with, uh, if you back off and let him whiff it, he's gonna whiff it. Because he won't catch you on the backing off before it actually gets to the point where whiffing it becomes the only option he has. Yeah, I was not expecting all of that jumping light kick shenanigans. Although apparently it's going to be interesting in Mika Butland, but it's apparently a thing. Do you use that much yourself? The jumping light kick nonsense. Yeah, I I do jumping light kick all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's my go-to air-to-air button. I see. Well, here we are again. The most rad Mika versus Dwarf. Honestly, it's a bad habit of mine because then I don't get to do medium punch instead a lot since I default to light kick and don't get to do the target combo and therefore don't get to practice the target combo. Okay. So, yeah. I see. And honestly, medium punch is actually a pretty nice air to air button. Mm -hmm. So. Right. You don't actually get that much off of light kick. Well, what does your shooting star combo start off with? Medium punch. Okay. Is it the same as Kareem? Yeah. Oh, medium heavy. All right. I just wonder what Kareem's is called now. And. They're not, not light kick nonsense. Yeah. Although, there we go. That they they well didn't deserved. use the light kick to do command throw. That's usually what I do. I jump in with my light kick and then I go for the command throw because the stun was long enough that they can't really right, do huh? much about it. And I'm pretty sure Alex doesn't have a three frame jab. So it's even more. No. Could have gotten the XP chop there. More of a good idea against him? Round two. Fight. are not working out for me. He's like a heavy punch or some button. I don't know if Alex even has it, but just something to outrange that light kick a little bit more. With Tammy Curry and Ribuki, I would definitely be putting out the um, heavy punch there. Oh well. And blocked! Counter CA! No. On their hand, that EX can do a lot of damage to They don't know the media off of the EX wing list, apparently. They didn't go for a throw. Final round. Fight. Ooh, very nice. You'll definitely have to put in drop kick in the Mika bot too. And honestly, that's a really nice one for bots. Since you can just have it hold for a long time. And if you're hiding it, you can probably like... Actually, can you even hide a charge drop kick? I have no idea. I don't think you can. I suppose it depends on what you hide it in. If you hide it in hitting one of these, absolutely. But I don't think we're going to be putting too much CA in that way. You can, you can totally hide it. Mm -hmm. uh, because you can release it outside of whatever you're hiding it in and just have a down block in the move. What? So you just do something like uh, Irish Rope. Down block, and then release the charge drop kick, right? Huh. Magic bot input hiding techniques and abusing the lack of negative edge on normals. You realize you just hold the button, right? 
Uh huh. That's precisely why I say that you can hide it. Yeah. Right. Uh, really, in notes, it's not like tap, and you have to actually start it for it to come out. So it's easier to hide something in the drop kick instead. Hmm. See, I had assumed that uh, you would hide the start of the drop kick. And for that same reason, it wouldn't come out. Having yourself release it after whatever you were hiding it in wouldn't matter. But we can work that out when it's time for Mikabot. Anyway, that's it. Uh, we're done with what we had intended, at least, I think. And I'm hungry, so see y'all. I'm getting dinner. Bye, guys. Thank you for visiting 2MK.